You're watching Brockton Community Access. My name is Mark Lindy. I'm the general manager here at Brockton Community Access, and we are bringing you Meet the Candidates. There's an election coming up in early November, and uh, we have one of the candidates running for counselor at large, Kevin Borges. Kevin, welcome to BCA Studios. Nice to meet you. Nice to, nice to be here, Mark. Kevin, I see you every place. The posters are out there. Your likeness is on the posters. You're a first-time candidate. I'm going to tell you, impressive to see all that support all around the city right now. Um, you're running for Councilor at Large. Councilor at Large is citywide. I'm sure you're busy enough with your day job. You're a health inspector for the city of Brockton, correct? Correct. Okay, and uh, you're seeking to be a citywide Councilor at Large. I'm going to point out that if you get elected, you can only collect one salary. You can collect your salary for your job, your full-time job. So you can't collect the salary for being a counselor at large, okay? So that is true public service. Okay? Yes, it is, Mark. I was an elected official, and I did not get paid. So that's when you're a public servant. Even if you get paid, you're still a public servant, don't get me wrong, but um, you're even more so. So just my two cents, my opinion. Uh, if someone doesn't like it, they're going to have to shoot me for it. What can I tell you? So what got you into the race, Kevin? What, first of all, why don't you talk about yourself? Because you know yourself better than I know you or the community knows you. I know you have all your info on the flyers. What do you want people to know about Kevin Borges? Well, I want them to know that I'm a family man. I'm married to my wife, Tony Belmosto. The Belmostos um, are lifelong uh, Brocktonians. I have two boys. My wife and I were raising our family on the east side. We have a 15-year-old son and an 8-year-old son. Mm -hmm. I'm a family man. I'm a father. I'm a hard worker uh, in the sense of that I uh, put all my effort into my jobs, into my family, and into the community uh, with sports and so forth. I, um, I work for the Brockton Board of Health as a health inspector. Mm -hmm. I do code enforcement here in the city of Brockton. I also am part of the receivership task force working with the Attorney General's office going after vacant and abandoned properties. I went to Harvard University with Community Progress Leadership Institute and we strategized against fighting blight in neighborhoods. So I have that experience uh, that I want to uh, move forward with uh, being a counselor at large. I believe that I'll have that experience uh, to try to bring forward some legislation and some ordinances that I believe that we should have here in the city that will strengthen our code enforcement. So code enforcement means exactly what, what explain it to me as a layperson. Um, I'm going to assume if you have an abandoned car on your property, you might have something to say about that. Tell me about code enforcement a little bit. Well, code enforcement is, it covers a lot of ground. And I think that when people think of the Board of Health, they think of restaurants, which, yes, the Board of Health covers restaurants, but it also covers a wide variety um, of issues uh, involving 105 CMR codes in the mm -hmm. city. And the 105 CMR codes are state sanitary codes uh, which cover anywhere from restaurants, we do tenement homes, we do nursing homes, we do markets. Uh, so, and we also use chapter 111, which uh, is the vacant and abandoned properties that we use that with 105 CMR codes to actually obtain administrative warrants to go into vacant properties and take action against the lenders that um, have these properties uh, remain vacant in our community. And if you have an abandoned house in a community, if, you know, we don't, Brockton never wants to be Detroit. You have entire neighborhoods, entire, you know, whole areas. Um, I know in the past in Brockton, there were <coughs> lots of multifamilies torn down because they were so blighted before you were, uh, you know, a health inspector. Right around the corner on, on Main and Spring near the Main Spring house, that whole section over there, I remember all those houses went down and it turned into like a community uh, outdoor garden, okay? But all you need is one house, and it's your property values, and that house could be a drug house, it could be used for all sorts of different things. So um, I know if landlords aren't in compliance with certain things, you guys come in 
into play. People have to have hot water in their houses. Correct. So I'll tell you, that's a pretty comprehensive job. So you want to take on more. You want to be a city councilor. So the city councilors do the legislation, like you just said. The mayor is the executive of the city. The city council is the legislative body. And you're already mentioning all sorts of codes and state codes, and we have local ordinances. Um, you, you talked about beefing up the ordinances. Is there anything specific that yeah. you have in mind that, you know, if you if you get elected, you would want to bring forward? Yes. So there's um, a code. In, well, it's actually um, an ordinance, which is Chapter 40U. And Chapter 40U is something that I would like to have actually utilized here in the city, and it would be the fine process. And the fine process uh, that we have now, I believe, could be better. And I think that that will, will help with our code enforcement across the board. So uh, as far as with code enforcement, that's one of the things I would like to see happen and also with um, some more comprehensive technology. I would like to have our departments collaborate with one another uh, on a better level, which would be um, with advanced technology. That makes a lot of sense. I just rented a car and the guy had a little mini computer. He had a place for the credit card. He, everything was right there in the parking lot. I never had to walk in the building and fill out a piece of paper. So that's kind of what you're talking about. We get a great IT department for the city of Brockton. Bill Santos runs that. And uh, everything's going down to this level nowadays, okay? And uh, yeah, that, sounds like a, that sounds like a really good idea. Yeah, because I think that if we could advance into, you know, the 21st century with technology, that's going to help across the board with all of our departments, uh, with building department, uh, the health department, uh, with the police department, fire department. So if we can all know what we're doing uh, with every inspection by having it, you know, on the same, um, you know, we have it inputted into, you know, a, you know a, like a tablet that we can share the information with one another so that we can work, you know, better to, you know, enforce the code enforcement here in the city. And you mentioned all those departments, and I know you work in conjunction with all those departments. Yes. When there's a code, you know, violation, um, you know, sometimes you need the police to be involved in that. Sometimes it's a fire code violation. All sorts of different things. It's pretty. It's pretty comprehensive, and Brockton is a pretty big place. Correct. So you get your hands full. So this is in your your spare time when you're off the clock, 8:30 to 4:30. You're working for the city, and I know I've seen you at different uh, events. Like a, I think I I think I originally met you at the Lebanese Festival, if I'm not mistaken. You you might have been <clears throat> doing the you know making sure that everything's in order over there. I never miss that great food. Okay. It is very good food, and I miss that. It's once a year, uh, just like the Greek festival is once a year, and um, it's, you know, I like it when the community comes together. It's, it's, it's just especially, uh, like with the Lebanese uh, festival, uh, St. Teresa's, uh, I was doing some inspections over there, and one thing led to the next, and I ended up um, being fortunate enough to be on the rotation uh, to uh, be a lector at the uh, Saturday vigil that they have there, so that was special. So I mean, you're, involved special in the, to me. you're involved in the churches. I know. Yes. I know. I saw that on your flyer. The other thing is the Downey Little League. You're the yes. vice president, right? Yes, I'm the Downey Youth Vice President there, Downey Youth Baseball, and I've been involved there for ten years as a coach, as a mentor. Um, I'm very involved with trying to help the youth in the city because I really believe that we need to add more programs. We need to help them in every way that we can. I'm also a BCB basketball coach for Brockton Community Schools. Uh, Brockton Community Basketball, um, and that's a really great program as well. So you're gonna you're gonna have a few hats. It's it's hard when you get elected uh, to do as many things as you're doing now. I'm sure I know you. You have a lot of energy, so you're probably gonna still do them. Okay, but um, the legislation, the 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 code enforcement. <clears throat> you're out there knocking on doors, okay? The weather's still good. I mean, it wasn't so good this morning, but the weather's still good most of the time. We're in beautiful fall season, my favorite season of the year. Um, you're talking to the people out there. I would venture to bet, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, because I knocked on doors once before, not for council, but people are concerned about their public safety, right? Yes, they are. Um, we have a great police force, wonderful men and women in uniform that serve us every day go out every day uh, not knowing whether something bad's going to happen to them. Hopefully they'll go home and return to their families. But that's a kind of quality of life issue. 
I know you've been a real estate agent as well. You've been licensed for how long? 20 years. Okay. Uh, specializing in real estate for 20 years, uh, working uh, with many different uh, real estate deals involving um, national companies. I assembled the team that went to Oklahoma City uh, that I put together to uh, bring um, the first Sonic restaurant to southeastern Massachusetts. I've worked with many um, uh, companies, Motiva, Shell, Oil, um, Amarada, Amarada Hess, uh, prior to becoming Speedway. I've dealt with a lot of major companies, uh, so I'm, I consider myself a master negotiator. Uh, and therefore, I believe that that, in, that will bode well as a city councilor. We have a lot of issues that we need to make, and we need to have some sound decisions made with a lot of these issues we face here in the city. And I believe that as a councilor, I will be able to help with there's that. A, there's a real estate committee, so you sound like you'd be a natural for that. City has properties, certain properties that are out of use that maybe could be put towards another use or if they're not gonna be able to be put to another use because they're either old and filled with maybe unsafe things like asbestos, clear the property, market the property. I know there's places like the, the Howard School on North Main Street, the Whitman School that I went to when I was a kid. Uh, you know, you put that real estate knowledge to use because if you look at an 11 member city council, four at large councils, which you're seeking to be one of them, if different people bring different expertise to the table, it's for the good of all the residents of Brockton. I agree. Okay. And this is a calling of mine, Mark. It's something that, you know, I got into this race late, and but it was definitely a calling to do something for the city of Brockton. I really, truly want to give back. Um, I've been fortunate enough, and I'm blessed in my life uh, with my family. I have my wife and my two boys, and... Um, I want to be able to give back to Brockton, and that's why I am seeking to become a counselor at large here in the city. It will not cost the taxpayers any money for me to have this position. It coincides well with what I'm doing now in the city, with my city job, uh, with the information that I bring forward to help the city in terms of uh, the wealth of knowledge I have in real estate, uh, and across the board with you know all the issues going on here in the city. Uh, I think that I would um, be a great asset to the city and I'll be able to help the residents uh, in every way. Now, one of the things councilors deal with is uh, the mayor puts forth the budget every year. The council considers it. They can only cut it. They can't add to it. Uh, they can subtract from it, but they can't add to it. But also going before the city council is some uh, pretty meaty contracts. Every year there are contracts that go for approval to the City Council. Um, I watched the Council at Large debate that the NAACP put on and I know it, pretty close to the end and closing statements came up and you brought forward what I would consider a serious issue with a contract that predates uh, your involvement as a city employee. Um, you weren't a candidate, I, I don't know, you're younger than me, so you, you could have still been in school, but there's a contract that's sitting on the books, 1991, 1994, something like that. Tell me about that. Well, I took it upon myself uh, to see what, the f uh, what a city councilor and what the functions are of a city councilor. So I looked at some contracts and I stumbled upon one that is um, for full-time workers here in the city. It's 457B and also the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1991, and that's for part-time workers. So what this is is for deferred compensation for retirement funds. And it's with Nationwide, which is sponsored by the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And so when I looked into it, I, I uh, discovered that it hadn't been ratified since 1994. So all contracts must be ratified, meaning they should be procured every five years. And so with this contract, I see that it hasn't been ratified or procured, went out for bid since 1994. So that's something I want to be able to uh, look into further, to have reviewed, 
and then ultimately have ratified because I want to make sure that every contract in the city, any open-ended contract, must be ratified. And as a city councilor, I will be a fiscal hawk, and that's something that I stand firm on because I believe that these issues here need to be tended to um, and you know, they need to be uh, resolved in terms of um, with any open-ended contracts in the city because this involves a lot of money that goes in every single month and it involves tens of thousands of dollars and it involves thousands of people. And I just want to make sure that we um, are on top of these issues in the city. So something like that, I mean, if you think about it, 1994, we've been through a whole series of mayors, a whole series of city councils. I know, like, for instance, the cable contract uh, started off as a 15-year contract, and then that's the initial one, and then it's every 10 years. So we're in, like, the fourth contract for Brockton. Um, but they go through that process. There's a whole three-year period that they do ascertainment and everything, and that goes through, like, the, the mayor's office is the issuing authority, cable advisory board. There's a whole process. that You're talking a lot of money. You're talking money that people... The hard-earned money of the, the police, the fire, teachers are separate teachers who do mass retirement system, but the, your city workers, your, your clerk in an office all the way up to department heads that invest their money, that sounds pretty serious. You're so, talking police, fire, school teachers, um, union workers. Um, you're also talking, so the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act, OBRA, that covers part-time workers. So like substitute the library teachers, page. library, yeah. um, poll workers, election poll workers, and mm. so forth. Uh, so that's something that, you know, is definitely, a lot of people, when, they, when I mention it, they don't really grasp it. Uh, but once they look into this further, I really believe that they're going to see that this is something that needs to be addressed uh, and it should be addressed immediately. Um, this is not just in Brockton. Uh, it's all over the state. And um, it's, it's, it's moving pretty rapidly with people starting to realize that um, this, th this is an issue. Um, I formally made a request today to Nationwide Representative uh, requesting any and all contracts with Nationwide in the city of Brockton dating back to 1994. So I put that request in today and, and I'm hoping that I get an answer so that I can, you know, begin the process of resolving this. Well, if you think about it, let's go back to 1994. Um, I don't think there are too many people driving a 1994 car unless, unless you know, not in Havana. Havana is a 1957 <clears throat> Chevy. But uh, you talk about your technology, uh, these things didn't exist. It was a bag phone then. It was a, it was a computer with a big monitor, not a flat screen. You didn't have the flat screen TVs. So that works. The, I mean, it's possible from what you're saying that maybe people didn't get a great return on the investment necessarily, that if it was put out to bid, there's a possibility they could have earned more in funding for their retirement, for their futures. And, you know, let's face it, people use it for their retirement, but after they pass, it probably goes on to a family member or a grandchild or something like that. So you're talking, you're talking lots of money. Correct. And so, um, you know, at the very least, you know, it, it should be ratified. Uh, it's not in compliance. And that's something, you know, this contract and any other contract is what I will look for because that's, that's will be my duty as a counselor at large to be able to make sure that all the contracts are, you know, ratified accordingly. What do you see as <clears throat> priorities uh, if, if there are one or two or even three things that you want to hit the ground running if you get elected? This would be one of them, obviously. Yes, yes. You're, you're out there knocking on doors <clears throat> and talking to people. I know we, we talked before you went on the air about you know public safety concerns. People have that, keeping the city safe, because as, as a real estate agent, you probably can't sell a house in Brockton unless people feel safe. You probably can't sell a house in Brockton unless people feel that their money's being spent wisely or used wisely, and there's a good quality education. So are there any one or two issues that you're hearing out there when you're knocking on doors, you're talking to all, all, the, all the people? Yeah, well, people want to feel safe. They want to have a feeling of feeling safe in their city. Um, you know, even statistically, I know that the crime has come down in Brockton, but people still have that feeling of not, you know, um, you know, feeling safe. So I want to be able to enhance code enforcement, public safety. I want to work with our state delegation. I, I will be the bold 
innovative counselor <clears throat> that will go forward and do whatever necessary to get more money for our city. We deserve it. Uh, we need to be brought up with the times. Our intersections are behind time. We have infrastructure problems. Uh, that's what I hear a lot out there when I'm knocking on doors. People want to have their roads, you know, fixed. Uh, you know, a lot of these roads are, you know, in bad condition. We have uh, intersections that are very dangerous. Uh, so th these are the things that I want to go out and do for the citizens of Brockton. I want to go and fight for more money. We deserve it. And I believe that with my voice and with my determination, I can, um, I can make things happen. I believe you said during one of the debates, correct me if I'm wrong, that if you're the only one going and knocking on the governor's door, you're going to do it. Yes. Okay. Because um, Brockton, like, we're a gateway city. Um, we used to be a real manufacturing hub, not as much anymore. But um, it's always been my contention that Brockton's never gotten its full share. I mean, I, different mayors, different legislative delegations, they've fought for us, don't get me wrong. But for whatever reason, we don't get funding. I, I teach at Massasoit Community College. <clears throat> there are 15 community colleges. Sometimes we're near the bottom tier in terms of what we got. We got cheated out of uh, a health sciences building on the Christos property, right around the corner from where you live, okay? That's an economic <clears throat> development thing. So counselors, I mean, the way I look at it, if you live in Brockton, you have five city councilors. You have your ward councilor, and then you have four other councilors that represent you citywide. And then you have a mayor, and then you have a senator and a rep. So you've got a whole team approach. Um, how about the sports analogy for the moment? Being a coach, you got to get all the kids on the same page. So that's what you're seeking to do. You want to work with the, the other players to bring the win back to the city of Brockton. Good analogy? Absolutely. Great okay. analogy. Um, did you get in also because not just your commitment to community service, but because you got bit a little bit by the political bug? I know you were very involved in the Carpenter campaign when he first, when he first ran and all the way up until he passed. Um, did you see a logical connection to yourself in public service through that? Um, I did, um, you know, in some respect, uh, but, you know, when I started thinking about actually throwing my hat in the ring, it was something that just, it just happened so quickly. It was uh, on July 31st. Um, I was uh, scrambling to try to get things prepared before leaving on vacation. I had a family vacation to go on. That's the one vacation I go every single year with our family. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I threw my hat in the ring. Uh, and I came back from vacation on the August 10th and I had the NAACP event. It was just something that was meant to be. It was meant to be for me to be in this race. So talk about anything that you want to get out to the constituents. This is, this is your opportunity. You're going door to door. You're giving the pitch. You're talking to everybody. You know, you're introducing yourself. It, you're not a shy person by any stretch of the imagination. No. That was hard for me when I first started doing that. I had a campaign manager going around with me. I'm sure you got someone going with you. How do, do you? Usually I go by myself. Okay so, you, okay, so you're really bold. I'll give you extra points for that. Give, give the voters the pitch. Tell them you're not going to hit every single door that you have. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a closing statement, but I don't know if you want to, you know, try it out. My pitch is simple. I say it all the time when I knock on the door. It sounds, you know, um, repetitive, but this is my pitch. It's simple. It's, um, my name is Kevin Borges and I'm running for city council at large. I live here in the city of Brockton with my wife, Tony Belmosto, and my two boys, Alec is 15, Dominic is 8. I work for the city of Brockton as a health inspector. I also do code enforcement here in the city of Brockton. I am part of the receivership task force working with the attorney general's office going after vacant and abandoned properties. I'm a parks commissioner here in the city of Brockton. I also am a real estate broker specializing in commercial real estate for over 20 years. I'm a coach for BCB basketball. I'm also a vice president at Downey Youth Baseball working with our youth. I'm very involved in the community. 
I'm the only one who's not receiving a paycheck to do this because I want to stand up for the residents of Brockton. I'm doing this because I want to give back to Brockton. I'm 50 years old and it's my time to give back and this is the way I'm going to do it. I want to bring my knowledge and the wealth of experience that I have and work to make Brockton a better place for all of us. Everyone will have a seat at the table. That's my policy and I will always work in the best interest of the citizens of Brockton. So I, f I humbly ask my fellow citizens of Brockton to please consider me, Kevin Borges, for counselor at large. I'm number four on the ballot. Thank you. So Kevin, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? If they want to contact you before voting day, and then they'll have your number after voting day if you get elected, or website, any of the information you want to give us. Well, if you want to reach me, you can reach me directly on my cell phone at 508-726-7777. I will always be available, and I'll always be accessible. Thank you. Seven's a big number for you. It's on your, it's on your license plate, <clears throat> though. I know you have it there, I think. Yes, Am I, I right? do. My initials um, and my... Do you have a Facebook? Seven. Yes, so I do. So people can look at your Facebook? Facebook, Instagram, yes. All the latest technology. Um, so we're getting close to Election Day. Um, it's not too far around the corner, right? So um, let's ho hope the weather holds out. We're, yes. we, we need a good weather day because it takes down voter participation. If it's cold and rain, like if it was this morning, it would have been awful. It was so rainy and I so know. wet. Um, mm -hmm. uh, How's your family dealing with this? To have a couple of younger kids and to have, I know your wife is one of your biggest supporters and I remember the <clears throat> Belmosto family very well because my brother worked a lot on the east side of Brockton and I'd go visit him and my dad knew her dad with the, the service at the station. I knew everybody because I've been here for almost my entire life. Um, How's your family dealing with this? Your, are your kids into it and your wife? They are into it. In fact, they helped me put together some brochures last night. We had um, the, um, we were able to go to the high rises and we were able to say a three, four minute speech uh, to the residents, share some words there. So they put together my brochures with some candy and they mm -hmm. came with me. They're really good sports about this and I tell them all the time, you know, dad is doing this because I want to help the city that we live in. And this is something that I want them to learn from, that look at this is a commitment that I'm making, but it's the right choice because it's something that will help them and it will help all families in Brockton. Um, it is a lot of work, I can tell you that. It's, it's a daunting task, it's, um, it's something that, it takes a lot of effort to do this. I mean, it's not a mayoral race, so it's not like you have seven captains and you have you know, uh, a slew of people working for you each and every day. It's more or less me doing this. Um, I'm out there knocking on the doors. I have my wife and I have my two boys. Uh, they try to help me as much as I can, but I must be honest, I had them out with me on Saturday and they don't move quick enough for me. Okay. Uh, they were trying to help and I had them with me on a couple of streets, but I said, okay, it's, um, I got this. I'm, I, you know, I'll take care of the rest. So boundless energy. Yes, I just, you know, because I have to methodically hit the doors and I have to make sure that I, um, reach as many people as I can because I want them to know who I am and what I'm running on. So, but my family has been so helpful and I'm so, I'm so grateful for my wife and my kids because they really are supporting me with this and it means a lot to me. Well, thanks for being on Meet the Candidate. Uh, Thank you, Mark. Wish you luck and Thank you. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see you at the polls. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us and watching Meet the Candidate, Kevin Borges running for Counselor at Large. Take a, take a look and a listen to Brockton Community Access for more election coverage. We'll have other candidates on, and we'll bring you election night coverage here on Brockton Community Access. Thanks for joining us.